my friends. Glad to see you made it. We're gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, he's alive. My friends, today we're, we're still working on our Torah study, our Torah teachings, as we're going through the book of Genesis, uh, going through Joseph's story. Uh, today we're going to be there in, in chapters 41 of the book of Genesis. And, and yeah, we're going to do some reading and stuff because... Uh, if you've been following along and seeing through the last few videos, then you would understand and know. We've been going through Joseph's life. And now we're at the point where, where he's deciphered the dream for Pharaoh. Right? And now we're going to see that what happens after... Uh, 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 he deciphers the dream, you know, right? Remember, Pharaoh then gives him all this authority and everything, and then with the authority, he goes out, and the whole land prospers. Everybody prospers. But, uh, again, uh, remember, I, I want you to know that this is, uh, sure, we can make this physical book, and yes, this stuff happened in the physical world, but but it's also a spirit book, right? So so we have a remember Paul says, "Hey, be aware, you know, where this battle is uh, against the, the dark forces and, and demonic stuff in heavenly realms, heavenly realms." So sometimes yeah, I might make have more the heavenly realms. Sometimes God Jesus says, "Well, heaven is within us." Kingdom of heaven is within you. It's within your heart. Holy cow, that's like a heavenly realm, right? Heaven, heavenly realm. Okay, so a battle is in our minds sometimes. And uh, fear, right? Devil is fear, opposite of God. Wants to be God, but is the opposite of God. <laughs> Right, and, and that's the thing I, I love about the story of Joseph is is God demonstrating his, how his authority is so much greater than than that, that of man who is in the world. Right, he's spirit, and he has the power to change the hearts and minds of, of people all around, and. Uh, so that's the thing I, I want you to recognize. You got to remember that Joseph, in, in the spirit of the living God, uh, 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 transforms, right? Doesn't conform to, doesn't conform to the Egyptian way, but transforms the Egyptian way to towards God's will. Now, over four hundred years later, that you know Moses' time, it, this stuff got forgotten, got forgotten. Right? But, but at this time, it's about the restoration. And same with our lives, right? We, we need to be reborn. Right? Must be born again. Uh oh, what's that mean? Well, you were born of flesh, and now you need to be born of spirit. So this is a flesh book, but yet it's a spirit book. And I know it's kind of weird. We don't have spirits and demons and devils and oh my. <laughs> And so you just got to recognize uh, the, the power of memories, the power of thoughts. Right? And in this world, and especially in the internet and Google, uh, 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 the, the power, and that's the thing, right? And what is like a terrorist creates terror. What is terror? Fear. Okay? So, so how do you take away that power of fear. How do you take away their, their works or, or their deeds or, or their influence? How do you take away their power? Right? And so that's what this is like about. That's what God's about, right? God says, Dude, that's the thing. Throughout all the Bible, look what God says to, jo uh, 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 to Joshua. Okay, you're next in charge. Oh no, but Moses, we got it. We're now we're ready, God. We're gonna follow Moses forever now. That ah, time to hear him today. You're in charge. Well, this is the commandment I give you, and you follow the every commandment that comes from the mouth of God. 
be strong. Take courage. Only be strong. For I, the Lord your God, the, your God, will go in front of you and prepare the way. This is the commandment of the living God. Be strong. Take courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Why? Because we're going to go kill the devil. And he is fear. He's master of fear. Right? God, master of love. Life without fear. Ah, okay. Let's look at this story here. And again, names are so important. So important. They have meaning. They have lots of meaning. So i going to read some of the side notes and things of the Bible because I want you to recognize, you know, there's a lot of pictures there. You go down to Egypt and you can look back into ancient times. You can look back into these times. And it's written on walls and paintings and carvings and all this stuff. Right? Now, who is that guy? Who are those people? Right? And we always wonder. Now, I have a lot of different names and call them all this stuff. And like I said, words and names are important. Because then you come to find out. Hey, you know who those people are on those walls? Who they were talking about? These people. Joseph and his wife. Hey, you see, there's that one picture, and there's like, I don't know, everybody says, ah, oh, it's like a giant alien, Nephilim. No, what, what it is and why they're so big, and the other people are so little, the, the power. Let me demonstrate and show you the power these people have. And that's why they're created and made uh, on these things to look like giants. The, the, their power was giant over the people. Understand that this is this is this is real Bible. They don't mention, you know, Joseph. No, they have their own names, right? They 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 aren't going to conform to God or be transformed. They are going to stick to their way. But you will see how God overpowers that, and you kind of understand uh, all that stuff's there. <laughs> it's all there, and what. And how God, that's why the Egypt is ruins today. Understand that. That's how God showed his overpowering strength. And, and again, I want to remind you that Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the anointed one, the capstone, the cornerstone, the one and only living God, the one the builders rejected, the, the one that the, the religions rejected. Right? The capstone. You know, the, the, the one and only. Yeah, everybody else are gods, but they're little gods and they're false gods. And if the big God wants to beat them down, he can, because he is the only living God. Okay. So, again, this story is about Jesus Christ. Right? And, and not just in their day. But, but in our day, and in Jesus' day there, and uh, at Calvary, and Golgotha, and all that stuff 2,000 years ago, this is all how do we identify and know the truth, right? So, let's begin with the prayer before we begin with the read, and invite God in, into the presence, and... and uh, Give him the glory in the credit. Heavenly Father, I, I we come to you in the holiest of all names, in the name of, of Jesus Christ. We ask you to, to, to give us courage. We ask you, Father, to, to make us strong. We ask you, Father, to, to, to take away our fear, our doubt, Father, we ask for restoration. We ask you to, to heal us. We ask you to, to eliminate fear from, from our lives. And, and I know, Father, that, that the greatest way to do that is for your kingdom to come, for you to manifest yourself in, in our lives. We ask you, God, for wisdom and understanding of that wisdom. 
guard over my mouth, my body, my vessel, and my will. It's only your mouth, your words, your will may be done in our lives, Father. We love you. It's, it is you we are seeking. It is, it is forgiveness we are seeking. And, and the power and the strength to forgive so that we can live a life of joy. Father, I pray for joy. I pray for happiness. I, I pray for peace. Pray for harmony between us and you. Bless this video and anyone who watches it. Transform them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So, it says, he tells the dream, right? And now we're going to go past the dream. He tells the dream, interprets the dream, right? Got the seven years of plenty, seven years of, of, of famine. That could be the word of God, plenty of the word of God. Things are good. No word of God, things are bad, right? Right? Same thing. Now we're going to move on and see. Right? As Joseph doesn't conform, but, 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 transforms a whole nation, right? And that's the thing. Even Moses got two guys, Aaron and Moses, and transform. They don't conform, but transforms an entire nation. What is, you know, that's the thing with Jesus. Deliverer, Savior, Restorer. What? Hope, faith. No, I see a lot of lack of faith in the world today, and the evidence of the lack of faith is the willingness to share and participate in the spreading of terror, spreading of fear. You know, helping the, 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 the bad guys be known, be, have a voice. You don't get a voice. You don't get to speak. You don't get to be known. You know, that's the thing. It's, it's love, God. And the love for life will always overpower power darkness. It just matters how dark it gets, right? And the darker it gets, the, the more powerful uh, uh, the love bites back. You know, that's the thing, you know. Uh, and it's a fear for everybody, right? America bombed a country and blew away hundreds of thousands of people in, in an instant for far, far less crimes than what we've seen today for far less and why we allow it I don't know but it's God's plan this time God's gonna do it God's gonna take care of it right and we see the power of man but this time God will take care of it and why destroying us well if you believe it in God, you'd say, hey, he's going to restore the earth. He's going to take care of it. He, he's going to eliminate the, the hate, anger, and violence. And make it a land of happiness, hope, and faith. That's what God's going to do. And that's the thing. Do we want to agree with God? We want to agree with him. Because God is not fear, and he don't want us to be fearful. Right? He grieves God when we're afraid. But because he's God. What do you got to be afraid of? I'm God, and I'm your dad, and I, and I love you. No fear. Come on. Kids. Doesn't a dad love his kid? No matter what. Right? Okay. Now let's get to our Because I want you to understand all this is important. It identifies Joseph and identifies the power given to Joseph, the authority, and how, you know, I you, I don't know for sure, but I believe in you, and I don't know, I'll share it on the internet or something, but I don't like to show that stuff, it's, you know, but there it's there, on the Egyptian walls, right, it's all there, okay, and you see that, that how some of them are giants, and notice how they're working. Holy little people are working away, doing crop stuff. And 
gardening and all their stuff. But the giants have like scales, right? The giants are, you know, it wasn't that they were giants, guys. It was the power was giant. Giant power is what it represents. Giant authority is, is what it represents. Okay? Right. Jesus Christ says, I give you guys the power and authority to cast out demons. No. Yeah, I give you this power. I give you the power to make the blind see. No. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. So, so it's about the, the power and believing in the power. Without fear, right? That's the thing, you know. Okay. Now this was Joseph's answer, right? He gives the answer to the dream. Right? This is what's going to happen. God spoke to you. Now, this is what we should do. Okay? So verse 32 of chapter 41 of Genesis. That Pharaoh had the same dream twice, and this is Joseph speaking now to Pharaoh, and this is what you need to do, Pharaoh, with the answer. That Pharaoh had the same dream twice means that the matter has been reaffirmed, or reaffirmed by God, and that God will soon bring it about. So we need to take this serious. This is warning. It is God's word. And it's serious, right? Because he's going to bring it about, okay? So, so Pharaoh, son of Ra, they believe in a God. Now, they don't know who God is, really, because nobody ever seen God. But he believes in a God. He says, God spoke to you. He did. Okay, now let's take it serious. Therefore, let Pharaoh seek out a wise and discerning man and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should also take action to appoint overseers. Right? Uh-oh, that's like elders of the church and stuff. Overseers, right? See, see, do we want in this world today, do you, do you surround yourselves with overseers of Great finance, right? You got the accounting, got the insurance salesman. <laughs> you, you got all these people who know how to run a business, right? And all of a sudden, they're great tithing, tithers, right? And then they got the good jobs, paying out the good tithes, right? You know, nobody wants a, an old woman coming in with just a penny, right? Even though it might be all she has, and to God it means more, that penny, than all the rest, but we as humanity say, no, we're going to exalt this person to, to elders and, and deacons and all this stuff, right? right? The deacons and the elders are, are maintenance men, uh, janitors, guy who's going to mow the lawn, do all this for free, you know, and I, and I understand we donate our time and love to God, but isn't it interesting? That the, the people aren't full of the Holy Spirit. They're not full of, of the faith that says, Son, come here, blind boy. Jesus, see. And, and the boy sees because they don't have the faith in them to do it. Now, I got faith in me to go out and mow the lawn, but not that. Well, that's the thing. Do you, who do you want as the overseers and, and the people of, of the church and, and around you? What's your support system? Right? Support. So doesn't God always give support? You know, and you see in the book of Ezekiel, uh, you know, there's overseers, watchers, you know, uh, angels protecting over you. Right? God, I'm going to put angels and people in a spot in there and uh, they'll oversee everything. Right? Jesus says he's going to put a wine press. Right? Watchtower. Watch there. And any guy, he oversees everything. He didn't know why I'm pressed there. You know, that's where the grapes get squished. That's where, that's where the blood is made. That's, that's right there where the 
salvation comes from, right? Unless we drink his cup, cup bearer, right? You got the two boys uh, there, sons of Zebedee, and mom comes. They didn't come. Mom comes. Hey, will you have these two set on your right and left hand? When you get to the throne of God there, God's right hand, you know, Ah, oh, woman, you don't know what you're asking for. You don't even know what you're talking about. I don't have no control over that, but only God himself. You're going to drink the, the, the cup I can drink from? The boys say, yes, we can. Jesus says, yes, you can, and you will, and you will. Right, we've got to raise up to be the cupbearer. <laughs> take the get be, be glorified. Wait, one guy is taken down, is hooked to a stake and pierced, impaled, right? Jesus, from the blood, flows life. His water it is good. Their water poison turns the water into wine, right? Right? Squishing grapes and wine. <laughs> Joy, happiness, hope. Right? Gonna drink wine at the wedding banquet. Why? Because it brings joy. We're happy and we're full of hope. Right? Where does that all come from? Love. Because the love is the greatest. Love brought the joy, the hope, right? The happiness. What are we going to celebrate with? Celebrate with wine. Jesus says, unless you drink, you must drink from this cup. Unless you drink. Can you drink from it? Yes. You get, drink. Drink. Right? Then Joseph, right? Hey, Pharaoh, you need to hire a smart guy. You need to hire a wise man. Right? Wait, all wisdom comes from the living God. Ask God for wisdom and expect Him to answer. Right? Expect Him to answer. So all wisdom comes from God. You need to seek out a wise man. Okay, we just invited all the wisest men here in town and everybody we know and they couldn't decipher my dream. Where shall we find one? <laughs> It says, Pharaoh should also, and make him in charge of the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should also take action to appoint overseers as to, to a regiment. You know, a regiment, the land during the seven years of abundance. And they should husband, ain't that weird? They should husband all the food of the coming good years. Collecting the grain under Pharaoh's authority. Oh, Jesus says, hey, you know, the word of God is like the grain, the seed. The world is the field. Right? And the good grain hits the good soil and it grows up to be wheat. And it produces fruit. Right? Jesus says in the end, we'll, we'll take and we'll tie up the thorns and the thistles. Don't rip them up. Just tie them up. Right? And we'll separate it. When we take the, the, the weeds, when it's time, I'll send my messengers, I'll send my overseers, I'll send my people. And they grab that and throw it in the fire. Uh oh, fire of what? Hell! Well, no. God is love. We throw it in the fire. What? Where does all the thorns and thistles coming from? All the people living under power of, of fear. Power of I don't want to. The, the power of, who are you to tell me? The, the, the power of, I can't. I won't. I don't want to. Uh, being released from that power. To the power of, I can because the Almighty God is with me and all things are possible. That power. Now that's how we get into that. Because I don't have fear those things. I will do it. I can do it. What can man do to me when God is in me, with me? 
has the angels around. Overseers checking out all this stuff, right? Making sure the wheat and the grain's good, right? And then we're going to store, Jesus says, and then at the end we're going to store the grain, the good, the wheat. Then we'll pull it in. Right? Because it's the sins and identifying the lies. Lust, anger, jealousy, what's creating all this stuff? What creates the fear? Well, where did it come from? How do we kill it? Acknowledging it existed, but it has no power no more. Because I'm going to transform that world instead of being conformed to that. A life of hopelessness and fear. I'm going to be transformed. I don't want that no more. I want hope. I want to live. Why? Because I, I'm happy. I have joy. I have a bride. Like a husband. Right? Like a husband. Jesus. Husband. Bride. Us believers. Us the, the faith. Through the belief and the faith comes to the fruit. Why? Because you can't have a wedding without joy. You can't have a wedding without happiness. It all comes together through, through the love. God is love. And when we find out how God's love is for us, then we find out God loves others. And then all of a sudden, love comes walking in the door and you're not even expecting it. And you're just like, bam! Now... I see God. It is in our reality. It, it, it can be found. Oh God, have you restored my hope? Have you restored my happiness? Hey, would you like to know my name? <laughs> and that's the thing is, love doesn't boast. Joseph, put me in charge. Oh, you guys are idiots. No, Pharaoh, you need to seek out a wise man. You should do this. You should get a wise man. Get you some overseers. Do these good things. Okay? Paul says, hey, this is how you kind of create a new century church, right? Right? Not, not in the building. Every day they went to the marketplace. Every day they went out to the world, to the temple courts, to the out there. And I'm not saying straight preaching. Yeah, yeah it's okay, but you got to do it right. Or it don't work. Or, or it doesn't work. That's the thing with Jesus. It's through the love, faith, without fear. All right? It takes a lot of faith to go spit on the ground, pick up some mud, and wipe it in somebody's eyes, a stranger, and say, don't worry, go down to the, <laughs> to the lake of Shalom or what, the pond or whatever, you know, the, the pool. Wash your face be fine. Right? Somebody comes up to you, do that, you'd be like, get back, I'm fine. I don't need to see. <laughs> right? So it's faith. <laughs> Love. Okay. Okay. Pharaoh's authority. Coming good years, collecting the grain under Pharaoh's authority to be stored in the towns for food. <coughs> this food will serve as a reserve for the country against the seven years of famine that are to follow in the land of Egypt. Now, come to today. Okay, now what happened on the internet and through all of a sudden there's a great revival, I don't know. 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Look at <coughs> uh, 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 the, a great awakening. Ah, you can't find God in church. Look at all the people that we come across and find that, <coughs> and messengers and, and angels and people wanting to restore truth, restore uh, repentance, restore lives and love. Restore hope. Look look at all the stuff. Right? Well, what, what happened? God speaking to the world. Where did it all come from? Yeah, them seven years when it was fat and full, you know? People 
ate this. People believed in this. People came to know God. And, and now their, their testimony, the witness. Right? The witness. <coughs> two or more two or more witnesses. Now you're gonna come and see that the uh why this witness thing is important and how God overpowers all things and how <coughs> you know Ra is you know devil or, or false god or darkness and how God takes away his authority, his power, right? Adam breaks a covenant, breaks a law. Oh, oh all authority and power was given over to the devil. The devil. All power and authority was in God's hands. And Adam and Eve said, we believe the lie. And, and they chose the devil to empower over them. Now, okay, now we, we, we have sinned. Now we have a new master. Right? And the first thing they give birth to is Cain, sin. Cain, a, a murderer. Okay? A, a jealous man. That's the first thing they give birth to. Right? Sin. That was the result of, of, of giving the devil authority. Right? Now, spirit realm, reality realm, God wants both realms, right? In one. So how does that happen? He has to take back the authority. Jesus Christ takes back the authority. And then says, I have the authority. I am God. I'm the living God. That the living God lived in him. God proved that his word was truth when he rose him up. And all the authority and the power was there. Both here, you know, that's the thing. Both here and there. Jesus Christ had flesh and bones. There is a man standing in heaven. Understand that. There's a man in heaven. Not, not a spirit, not a man in heaven. Understand. Right? So he takes the authority. Okay, now I'm the cornerstone. Now I'm the, 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 the one and only true God. Proven. Both here in the reality, in the spirit realm, through death, through violence, you know, all of it. Proven. And then he says, I give you the authority. I'm going to give it back to you. Ain't that something? So, so why? So you can glorify him as you're the cupbearer and you give back. To, to, to God. And I understand these names are so important. Okay? Now. So that's the thing. How are we going to overcome? Jesus Christ overcomes the world. And the Antichrist. How are we going to overcome? Ah! Because God puts overseers. God puts elders. God puts people in a place. To gather the grave. That's great. Restore it. Restore. Okay. This advice pleased Pharaoh and all his officials. They were like, wow, this guy, who would have ever thought to that? After we're done eating grain, we throw it in the trash. That's what we do. But this guy, we can save it? Oh, maybe if we ate little or portions. Like, you know, instead of being all fat and slassy and rah, 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 we ate little smaller portions. And I'm not saying I'm fat or, or skinny, I'm fat. I, mean, well, I am a <laughs> little bit out of shape and, and that, but it, that's the thing with God. Doesn't he always want to take care of us and see to it that we get to that 80s and 90s and, and they're not miserable, right? They're not miserable. And that's tough. Some of us in the world, you know, get trapped by, by bad stuff. Now how do we overcome it? Well, we gotta get to God. We gotta gotta get to God, because He overcomes. Right? 
So, this pleases everybody. A man so endowed with the Spirit of God. Okay, Pharaoh and everybody, we've never seen a man endowed with the Spirit of God. Here I am, son of Ra, God on earth, and I've never seen the Spirit of God. Confession. Confession. Confess with your mouth. One's a sinner. He's lying. And confess that Jesus Christ is Lord God and Savior, and you shall live. Because that's the remission of sins. Uh-oh, Pharaoh confesses. Who? And all of his officials. Okay. Satan, his offspring, and all their officials. In the courtroom. Right? Two or more witnesses. Got the dark side and we got the witness of God, the Spirit of God. This is how God ripped away that authority way back then. That's how they are a rubble. That's how that is a society forgotten. But, but this society, the, the Christian nation, is still here. The nation of, of love, healers, hope, caretakers. It's all here. Right? And fear is passing away every day. It's going away. It's eventually, we'll be gone. That's the thing. Okay. Now. So Pharaoh says to Joseph, since God, right? And, and now we're saying El in that day. And God El and Elohim, right? Since you're God, Yahweh. Since God has made all this known to you, no one can be as wise and discerning as you are. Right? That's the thing with Jesus Christ. Whoever taught him anything. Wasn't it God himself? Teached himself everything? No, nobody told God. God, this is how you create the universe. And no, God said, this is how. I am God. Let there be light. And it happened through will and determination, through love and grace. Now, okay, so now we got confessions going on. You shall be in charge of my palace, and all of my people shall dart at your command. Now you're in charge of my house, the country, the nation, and, and any words you say shall be done to you like a dart flying off the, the, the arrow. Immediately, right? Immediately. Remember, Jesus there, he has the centurion soldier comes and ah, they're hanging out, just the disciples, and the soldier comes and, oh, Lord, Lord, I heard you can heal people. I heard you, son of the living God. Hey, hey, this guy came to our town and he's like my servant and he's my best friend and he created and made a synagogue there in the name of Yahweh, your God. And this guy is the nicest guy in our whole town and his son is sick. Let's go heal him, Jesus says. No, 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 stay right there. No, I'm a sinner and I'm dirty and you're not coming in my house. But, say the word, I am a soldier, and I know what authority means. I tell my slaves what to do, and they do it. I tell the soldiers who are under me what to do, and they do it. I know what authority is. If you are God, just say the word, and they will be healed. Jesus looks at his disciples, says, Wow, I never seen faith like this in all the land of Israel. 
at the disciples. I've never seen faith like that. In all the land. It will be done for you. Go home. Authority. Power. Immediately, the boy is healed. Right? Sometimes today's life, and I understand that the healing comes through the touching and being together and living and working in love, but one number one, like Peter says, stand up to the, the crippled men that are at the temple. Stand up and walk. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And everybody's surprised. He says, what do you think? I'm holy or something? No, it's the faith of Jesus Christ living in him. Living in him. That has made him whole. Has made him well. Turn your lives to him. Remember. God came to bless us and to restore us and to help us and to give us hope. Call on him and he will give you courage and strength. Look at this man. He's been fully restored by the faith of Jesus Christ in him. Courage, strength, hope. Man runs through all the town telling everybody. Hope. Joy, happiness, celebration. Now, it says, Only in one respect to the throne shall I outrank you. Herewith, Pharaoh told Joseph, I place you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. What that Pharaoh took off his great signet ring and put it on Joseph's finger. In only one place do I outrank you, Joseph. I give you all authority. And you have to take it. That that's the thing. I confess. Scott's in you. And I give you, this is the power I have. And you have not no more power than me. Because I am king and pharaoh and God on earth. And this is what I'm telling you, Joseph. Here's everything. Here's my signet ring. Everything. This is the power I have. And I give it to you, Joseph. Everything. Right? And then it has the gold chain. And the significant thing, everything, all authority, all power, both in the spiritual realm and physical realm. See, 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 that's the thing. Now, Pharaoh gives him a gift, a wife. Oh, was that wife? That wife is a princess of Egypt. No, 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 no. No princesses of Egypt. The goddess, the daughter of Ra. God. Daughter. Daughter. God. Right? Prince, no, no princess. Queen. God. Daughter of God. Goddess. Right? The goddess. Now, spirit realm and physical realm. Right? Ra. Devil says, here's my daughter, your bride. <laughs> here's your bride. The goddess, uh, goddess of, of Ra. Given the name, her name. Let's go to her name. All right. So he gets the ring and all the stuff, and then it becomes... Uh, known as was the visor or seal bearer of the king of lower Egypt. Visor or king or, or seal bearer. Right? Seal bearer. Right? Marked with, with the seal. Go to the book of Revelations. Right? Anybody who's not marked with the seal gets no food. Gets no help. Uh-oh. 
I mean, we got to turn our life to God to get food and help and everlasting life. Yep. You got to trust Him. What's the seal? It's marked on your heart. When anybody hears the voice of the living God, his children say, I, okay. What, what, what gets us to hear his voice? Okay, I was one day sitting there and all of a sudden somebody grabbed me and threw me in this bundle and I got all hot and he threw me in the fire. He come and said I was a liar. He, he come and took away my idols. He took away the things I had my hope in and it was all false and it was all negative and it was all wrong and all that stuff went in the fire and when it failed me, I lifted up my head and said, Man, what's going on? Help me, Lord, help me. Blast are those who call for help in the middle of the fire. He said, Abednego, Shadrach, one likened to God, one who calls on the name of God. The Lord is my helper. Where? In the middle of the fire stands the angels of God, the overseers, his child sealed. And he's God. Did you know the angels fought with the devil over Moses' body? Right? They can't find Moses. Why? He's in heaven. He's alive. I seen Ramsey. Seen Ramsey. But Moses, he's alive. Abraham's alive. Isaac's alive. Jacob's alive. He's the God of the living. And the dead. Right? <coughs> now. Put some as visor. Not, not just king or in charge, but both spiritual king. Joseph now gonna go out. He goes out through all the cities. Joseph leaves the presence of Pharaoh. Right? Jesus says, Here, I send you out. Did you notice how he sends them out in twos? He send them out in twos. Why? We need two witnesses. Twos are in love. You know, it doesn't say he sent out two men. It says, I sent them out in twos. Man and woman I made. These are God. And I don't see man, woman, Jew, Gentile. But my child sent them out in twos. <laughs> Why? Because they, they, they were gentle as doves and shrewd as snakes. And, but, but the love and God and focus. And look at these two people living in love. That's the whole world dying in hopelessness. And there we are, with hope and joy and happiness in a world that said it can't happen. Possible, yeah? Well, with God, all things are possible. I just took away your power. You ain't got none. Quit bitching at me. That's the thing, when the devil takes notice, you, he has no power. Right? He has no power. Comes like a roaring lion. What's a roaring lion? Roar! Everybody looks at the roaring lion and runs away. You have no power. You can't sneak up on me anymore. I know your tricks. I know your dirt. I know what you're doing. I turn it off. Don't look at it. Don't talk about it. Ain't gonna participate. Turn it off. Behind me, Satan. God. Not the will of man. Will a man wants to destroy? Will a man wants to go to war? Will a man wants to, to, to join the army? Will a man wants to live by the sword? No! Get behind me, Satan! I'm gonna will a God. I'm gonna seek love, help, mercy. I'm gonna seek that. I'm gonna find it. I'm latching on like it was a fine pearl that came from the bottom of the sea. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift that up to the living God. The cup bearer, and I'll lift it up. Look at this God, what I found. I found love in a world that couldn't, said I couldn't. Look, look God. Look. And he says, I, I will fill that cup. I'll overflow. It overflow and fruit and stuff will all come from that. The overflowing of that. Of everybody that comes by and says, Whoa! What are you guys doing? You're supposed to be afraid. I love you. How do you find peace in this world? What am I missing? What am I doing wrong? Oh, let me tell you about God. 
and the power to restore hope and faith, happiness and joy. Let me show you how to do these things. Let me tell you how to do this. Right? And that's what it's about. Okay. So his wife, right, he gets his wife, <coughs> and her name, and he gets a new name, right, he gets a new name, and a Hebrew translation, transcription of an Egyptian name, meaning the God speaks, the God, the God, the El, the one, and only speaks, and he lives. And he lives. Oh, we, we, we can have a conversation with God and not be consumed by the fire? He speaks and he lives. This guy's endowed with the Holy Spirit of the living God. He is like holy of all holies. And God lives with him. And he's seen God and spoke to God. And, and he lives. Go to the fire, and he lives. This is the Egyptian words, and it's Hebrew saying, hey, you know who all them people are? <laughs> Ancient statues, and there's a certain one where he's there. And so is this woman. About the sun god and all that stuff, and you see it there, and you say, wow, well, man, that's all demonic and evil. Well, don't call God demonic and evil, because he's the only living God there is. God can speak to anybody in any form where he chooses. Right? That's the thing in the world. Yeah, we can believe Jesus was the son of God, but you, you are the devil. <laughs> and that's the thing. Do we believe God? That's the thing. I believe in Jesus Christ. I don't believe in Catholics. That's your label. That's your title. That's yours. I don't believe in Pope. That's your label. That's your title. I believe in Jesus Christ. I don't believe in Baptists and in Methodists. I don't believe in it. It's a title. It's your name. Go ahead. Worship your name. I believe in Jesus Christ. Right? The sons and daughters of the living God. Now, that word also could say the newborn child. So it could say like this. The God speaks, and he, the newborn child, lives. Heard the voice of the living God. I was born of the flesh, now newborn into the spirit, and he lives. <laughs> Glory be to God, Jesus Christ is alive. He lives. Athenius means, and this is his wife's name, sorry, I'm not a very good reader, but, means belonging to the Egyptian goddess Neith. N E I T H, Neith. Okay, now we know exactly who that people are there. And it's just outside of Cairo, there's a, a, an Egyptian ruin, and on this Egyptian ruin, it's all there. Painted on there, not outside the Word of God, evidence that this happened. And they recorded it. That's what that is. <laughs> they recorded it on stone. They recorded it here in Earth. Both in the spiritual realm and the physical realm. As God ripped away the, their power and their authority. How do you think Moses walked in there and got too many Jews to say, or, or Hebrews, and say, all agree on one thing, all come together on one mind, that, that God's with us and we're going to walk through the ocean? How do you think all that happened? But because God was there. You know, that thing, you know, you know, oh, they were over there in the land of Goshen. The best, most fertile land of all of Egypt was the land of Goshen. They had the best. These weren't slaves. Yeah, they later became like slave work, like go to America. Oh, you gotta work for your insurance, you gotta work for your health care, you gotta work, 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 work. Man, you're working 12, 14 hours a day, 
Where's your love? Where's your family? Where's your life? Where, where's the enjoyment? God! Why? Slaving? He didn't do it willingly. Do it willingly. Mom's got a job. I all work nights. Dad works days. It's terrible. Terrible. Horrible. Horrible life. Wives and husbands should be in twos and pairs and, and working and living together as, as a living testimony, living witness of, of hope and faith, love and joy. Not, not, not who has the best career and things, idols, but, but who has the best relationships and, and enjoyment of being together, you know, that's the thing. I don't know. So, belonging to the Egyptian goddess means, so, so this is, okay, now we got Ra, son of Ra, God, right, sun god. And remember, they, they don't believe in, like, the living God, but the sun god. Okay, and the sun god is above the weather god. The sun god is above the, the moon god. The sun god. Remember, remember Joseph said in, in his dream, the sun and the moon and all the stars are going to bow down to me. Remember that? Okay, here's Ra, sun god, and, and, and the queen. The, the, the moon god, okay, or, or the goddess, the, the woman. Two goddess, right? You go later, and even in Ezekiel, you know, they were, or no, it's Jeremiah, they were all mad, you know, all you guys are Mother Earth, it's Mother Nature. There's no Mother Earth, there's no Mother Nature. There, there's God, Father. It's the spirit in us that cries out, Our Father, Abba, Daddy. That's the spirit of the living God, right? So now, got the moon and the stars <laughs> and the sun. And later the 12 stars come in, you know, they come back for help in the story, these brothers. So the sun God, Ra, and his son, and the queen, the, the goddess of the women, right? So now... Two official authorities hand over, I got all authority, I hand you over, Joseph, my ring and all my stuff. You have now all authority. Okay? And number two of all authority on the kingdom is your wife. <laughs> wife, the goddess. Right? So now we're spiritual realm. We're talking both spiritual and physical. Pharaoh's physical king, spiritual wife. Goddess of the whatever. Now, so, Potepina means, and so, I don't know how to spell that or say that word. And it means the same, it means he whom Ra, the Egyptian god, he whom Ra, Egyptian god, Right? Gave. Gave. Okay. So now you got a new name. Zephaniah Pivana. Or something like that. Right? And new name. Okay? You are now the man whom God speaks to and lives. And you are bride, or non bride, husband to. The one Ra gives. <laughs> How does Jesus Christ steal children like a thief in the night? He comes and I'm going to snatch them away. Be ready. Right? How do I steal children from Satan's hand? Because, you know, that's the thing. We are children of descendants of Cain. Right? I got this marking and nobody touched Cain. They're going to kill me, Lord. I can't bear my shame. All right, because I love you. Pow! There's a stamp, a seal on your head. Nobody touched that guy. Anybody kill that one? Seven times punishment to you for killing that one, right? Oh, shoot. That's like Jesus. <laughs> Anybody kill Jesus and the wrath of God come down on you.
right? <laughs> and so, so I want you to recognize, you know, he's got the new name, right? And Jesus Christ, new name. Yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a new name <laughs> in the end. And that name, you know, wormwood, right? No, the worm and the wood, the tree of life. God is the tree. And without the worm, there's no tree. You know, you go back to the book of Jonah. The worm did God's will. Right? The worm did God's will. The, the tree grows up, the comfort. Remember we talked this in the last video? The worm bites the tree and the tree falls down because the tree was made by God. Jonah, you didn't make the tree. Why are you crying? God sent a worm. And the worm bit the tree and it fell down. Now ah, you're crying. What's the matter? Jonah, you didn't make the tree. It was wonderful when you had shade. Now it's no good. Why? You know, you know, do you trust God? You know, you're the one who ran from God's will. God had to swallow him with the fish. Ain't that funny, Jesus? <laughs> All of a sudden, there's Peter. That Lord, they asked if we pay the temple tax. What'd you tell them? Yes. Oh, well, then you know, when you're the son of God, you don't pay temple tax. You don't do that. You know, does God tax his own son? Does the king tax his own son? No, he taxes those other people. Right? Makes them pay. Right? But, so we don't offend nobody. Go down the river and catch one fish. And in that fish's mouth is a chunk of gold. It's more than enough to pay for both you and me. Peter goes down and there's the fish. Ain't that something, man? Wouldn't that be cool? Man, ain't that like, wow. Here's a fish blows up like a, like a fine pearl out of the sea. There's a little chunk of gold. Peter goes in and says, here, yeah, this is for me and my master and our buds. You don't hear nothing about the rest of that story. You must have accepted it. You must have accepted it. <laughs> right? So, so now Joseph in charge, God's new official title. This man's endowed with the spirit of living God and he speaks and he lives. And he's married to the, the queen or, or goddess of uh, Ra, daughter of Ra. So here we got marriage, right? Now well, that's how Jesus comes and snatches us out of the hands of, 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 of Satan. He has no power. <laughs> and it was taken away a long time ago. He's a liar and a deceiver. And he uses fear to lie and deceive. That's what he does. His power is gone. He's never been there. That's the thing. Okay, and so it says a shorter form of the Hebrew on the city seven miles northeast of modern Cairo, a site chief temple of the sun god. There it is, right there. You can go there today to that temple and see uh, Joseph, see Joseph and his woman. And yeah, they're dressed and they look like giants, but the, that's the giant power and authority they have. And look at uh, all the stuff they're doing there. People are gathering grain and, and all the stuff, and they have the sun thing, and it speaks of, of a, uh, an eternal life, uh, uh, and a future, uh, uh, a man rising from the dead, all this stuff. It's there. And they say, wow, that's people trying to steal away from God. No, that's the whole world's hope and future is in Jesus Christ. Even theirs. Even theirs. They didn't know God. Nobody saw him. The thing, the light was in the world and nobody recognized it. Because they were afraid. Oh, afraid. Their spirit and afraid. They were afraid of the light and they retreated back into the darkness. Retreat back to the darkness. Hey, that's the thing with it in our lives is when God 
the Spirit of God comes and people who are fully endowed with the Spirit and, and it exposes the darkness. You just walk in a room, you know, that's the thing. I, I a lot of times go to church and I don't even speak, you know. I try, I say good morning and that's it. I try to be a friend, a nice guy. But a lot of times, you know, you go in the whole row is there. Convicted. You guys are convicted of your sin. Convicted. Just just walk into the presence of somebody who doesn't believe in it. And they see the transformation of your life. And they're convicted on the spot. You don't have to say anything. They're convicted of their sin. They're afraid of you. What are they afraid of? Your confidence, power, integrity, character, love. I'm sure the world violates you and drives fear. Can this person be trustworthy, real, true? Because it, when the light comes, it can be. And when the light's there, like it says in the Bible, they, you know, send these guys out and they're casting demons out. And, you know, they couldn't do it. These were disciples of Jesus. And they asked Jesus, why couldn't we do it? You know, fast and you don't pray. These kind take fasting and prayer. These ten time, kind take time, energy, thought, prayer. Right? That's the thing. Sometimes we're too willing to give up. We, 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 uh, we you know, we want to quit. And, and that's the thing with God. There's no quitting, you know, be strong. Take courage. You know, there's no stopping and retreating. And they stopped and they retreated, you know, and the, de the demon overpowered them. The, their faith in the lie was stronger than their faith in the truth. Right? Evidence was, you know, they couldn't do it. They gave up. Jesus went in there right away and healed him. <laughs> right away he healed him. Right? And what kind, what's fasting? That's the thing. Oh, we should go there and starve? No! No, fasting is the, is the distribute, you know, uh, distribution or whatever, the pouring out of charity. Charity, love, agape. Charity is something that is given with nothing expected back in return. Right? So that's agape love. That's why some Bibles it changes from agape or, or to charity instead of love. Right? Seek out charity. It's giving, giving, and caring. And it's the agape love. Charity is a donation. Uh, let me do this out of the love of my heart for God's will. And, and I don't need a, a thank you or anything. That's why Jesus says, invite the broken and the lame and the blind to your banquet. Because you serve them. They ain't going to say thank you. Right? The blind man's not going to say thank you. And yeah, maybe they will, but what if you're spiritually blind? They ain't going to say thank you. But, but, but you got to overcome that and, and know that it's still more important to, to get a brand new pair of socks and close their, clothe their feet and take care of them and help them than, than, than to thank you. It's more important to, to, to love them and care for them than to get them to confess to you that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Right? Did, did Peter say to the crippled man at, at the temple. Son! When you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, He will heal you. When you stop sinning, He will heal you. Did, he, did the words even come out? He said, stand up and walk. But I have no silver. I have no gold. But what I give you, I give you in the by the faith of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And he reached out his hand, grabs his hand, and helped him up. Right? That's what he said to him. That's what he said to him. Did he say confess? 
No, stand up and walk. Grab it in his hand with faith in Jesus Christ. And, and it was the other people, the scoffers, fault finders, grumblers, those people questioned and said, what happened there? How'd you do that? Those people, he said, what, are you surprised? Why are you surprised or amazed? You're the ones who said you believe in God. And yet you're amazed that this man stood up? It is not me. It's the God you believed in. The one you guys said you believed in. Restored this man full. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was that God, is the cornerstone, is the living God. You guys put your faith in laws, rules, and rituals. God desired mercy, grace, and truth. Right? All that is seen here in the story. Now, we're tying up, we're almost done. Let's finish. <laughs> kind of been all over the place today, but we haven't been. Understand that we're trying to make a 4,000 year story into today's life. Into today's life. How do we make this practical? How do we use this? How do I manifest God in my life? Well, like this. Okay. Now, and he's out working the town, does everything, everybody's listening. And so what would happen, okay? Joseph goes out into the town and everybody, and they hear what? What's Joseph, what? How does he get to transform all these people? Well, what? You begin preaching to them. Ah, do you guys know I'm Zephaniah, you know, and guy and God speaks to me, and he lives, and, and the wisdom of God's there. And if you listen to the wisdom and teachings and instructions of the living God, we can restore everything. <laughs> and so he begins to go out and tell them, and teach them, and, and everything, and, and how to be good people, and live good. And they listened to him, and it transformed everything. Ra, devil, gives over authority. Devil, queen of, of devil, gives wife to, 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 to Jesus, you know, bride, Jesus, groom, word, bride, right? All this is, is relevant and, and all that. And then, and then look, you know, Joseph, now they're going to have kids, right? And everything's good. And after a while, it went so well, better. Then Joseph planned. He planned everything out. And, and, yeah, if we do this, we'll have plenty. Jesus says, oh, cup overflow. Not, not plenty. More than enough. So much more that this will affect your, your son, your daughter, your wife, your neighbors. Now it affects your work. The people you work with. Now it affects the, the city. Now it affects a nation a nation and then a whole nation stands up and says let my people go Israel is God's firstborn let my people go says the Lord our God with boldness and confidence without fear without a weapon you understand? They, they did it without a weapon. Without one. No blood was shed. Right? Let me put a, a lamb, the Passover lamb, the blood upon the doors. No blood was shed. No weapons. A nation was born. In a day. In an hour. In a moment, right? God has done this many times before. Can we trust him to do it again here in, in our lives? Right? We only got to start with do. So what he says, I saw like these two. <laughs> two faithful servants. 
All right, here's the guy to all you guys. I'm going to send you out in twos. To do what? Go cast out demons and devils. <laughs> and heal the sick and restore the blind and fix the broken hearted. Sent them out in twos. And it doesn't say they were all men. Most of Jesus' followers were women. They were women. They don't get much credit, but in the book of Luke, the, the, Susanna and, and Mary and Mary Magdalene and, there's, and Martha, the, these people followed, took care of them. The, the women. Right? Understand. And I'm going to send you guys out with twos. Okay. Now he's going to have kids. And he didn't even have to count the grain no more. It got so fast, so full that he stopped counting. We don't have to count no more. More than the, the, the sand out in the desert. We got more grain and food than, than all of that. Right? We didn't have to count no more. We got enough to where we can both be fat and full and get through the seven years and have plenty to feed everybody out there starving in, in the famine. Jesus says, hey, do you guys ever, uh, how many loaves were left over? Basketfuls at the feeding of 5,000. 12? Who? Huh. Gather them up. We need that. We don't waste nothing. We'll save that for later. It's the bread of life. God says, give today each day. Day to day, my daily bread, my life, my joy. We stood up in the morning and filled ourselves with the armor of God. Filled ourselves with prayer, hope, and, 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 and a strong back. There's no armor on our backs in the armor of God. But it's our back that's turned to Satan. Why? Because we're not defenseless. God is behind us. That's where our faith is. We will attack and move forward in, in the hope and love. And God's behind us. Protecting our way. Guiding our feet. Understand. That the word is a lamp unto my eyes. A lamp unto my feet. A lamp unto my heart. A lamp unto a world of hope, faith, love. How can love be the greatest of all those and not have two, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife? How could Jesus Christ be groom and we be bridegroom and there not be man and woman, wife, weaker vessel, stronger vessel, uh, uh, the vessel of discernment, the vessel of courage, and put the discernment and the courage and the love together? What happens? Now all things are possible. That's what happens. All things become possible. And the thought and the threat of death and violence and destruction, that's the very thing that's on the ground that we walk over every day because that salt has no flavor anymore. It's good for nothing but thrown on the ground and there it is. And we trample over it each and every day as, as we... No, I'm going to look at it. No, I ain't going to acknowledge it. I'll try as you will, devil. Give me good cheer. I'm on the path. When the devil tries to take you off the path, that's because you're on it. <laughs> you're walking it. You're doing well. Good job, my good and faithful servant. They noticed you. They noticed you doing something right. Doing something to conquer and overcome the fears of this world. Now, trying to get to the dang names. <laughs> okay, so before the famine year set in, Joseph became the father of two sons born to him by his wife, after saying a daughter of Potipiphria. Okay, now go down to, oh, hey, go back to the book of Revelations and there's going to be this guy and, and, uh, and I don't know. You remember the book of Revelation. And it'll have names on him. All these names of, of God that are blasphemous names. Right? And be aware of that. 
so, 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 God saying, okay, I'm going to save a nation who has blasphemed my name. They never called on my name. They never knew my name. They used all kinds of names. And then you go to the Samaritan Bible readings, and Samaritans have a guy who comes up from out of the abyss. Uh oh, and he comes up from out of the abyss. Thousand years are like one year to God. So Adam and Eve and everybody dies before the thousand years. They die before the one day is up. They die before. The, the fulfillment of, of like eternal life, the thousand years if it was to, did they live to a thousand years or more? That means they would have accomplished and not died. The devil would have been truthful and God not a liar. So they die. Now Jesus Christ says, no, I restore the things and you will never die. And there the thousand year millennium kingdom comes to play. I'm not going to live 120 years. I'm not going to live 936 years. I'm going to live the full 1,000 years. The full 1,000 generations. To the glory and, and the power of the living God. Now that kingdom's here on earth. And it lives. And it lives in us. Because we can walk amongst this earth. Without the world. Cannot deny. All right, so I ran out of tape. I've been getting so long-winded, guys. I, I ran out of tape, and, and but I gotta finish this, you know. I I, I know where the guy. This is a long video, uh, but it's full of revelation. It's full of uh, 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 wisdom and, uh, and understanding. It's just gushing out, man. And I really pray and hope that that, that you are receiving this stuff and. And accepting it as God's holy word, God's holy testimony about his greatness and his love for us. You know, that's the thing. And I got to wrap this up and I'm wrapping it up. But I got to get this in there because the names. So he has, you know, the, the, the two sons. Firstborn son is Manasseh. Right? Manasseh. Meaning, God has made me forget. And this one goes a little further and says, God has made me forget entirely the sufferings I endured at the hands of my family. Whoa. So, if we're, we're like sons of Cain or, or descendants of Cain and we're trying to, to, to put death to sin, flesh, whatever, the desires of, of lust and that, and we're going to become children of the uh, living God, newborn creatures, right? Jesus Christ, what is the forgiveness of sins? Made me forget entirely. Whoa. See? Forgiveness of sins is, is when everybody you see walks around white and beautiful as God's holy children. There's no blemish here because the blood of Jesus Christ washes us clean and when you can see this right i forgot all the pains and sufferings well i forgot today but tomorrow i remember no i forgot well, when you see me here in white i can look into you and see white forgot all the pains Remember Jesus Christ? Do you think that Jesus forgave those who, who, who killed him? He died for the unbelief of the world. Although he rose to glorify God's children, he died for the unbelief of, of the world. You know, that's the thing. If Jesus Christ had not come, we would have been like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. We would have all been destroyed. All of us went our own way. All of us tried our own thing. All of us. All the world. Right? You see here? Manasseh. God made me forget. Jesus Christ. God made me forget. I only see the Son of the living God. He made me forget. Washes us over what will wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Because it makes God 
forget. Makes us forget. Forgive us, Father, for our trespasses as we have forgiven all the others for their trespasses against us. God made me forget all the pains and sufferings my family brought, this world brought, our battles in against flesh and blood. God makes us forget, takes those memories and destroys them. Because the power of the hope, love, faith of God's restoration and future and promise is all I can think about. It's all I can think about. Because God made me forget. He names his son Manasseh. Right? Manasseh becomes a little bit disobedient, so. What happens when we forget God? Become disobedient. Come problems. Right? And, and these are his sons with, you know, As Asenath, daughter of Pippaniah, priestess of Helopi. And remember all those blasphemous names? All they, all they called me by all these blasphemous names. There's only one name on heaven. There's only one name in earth. There's only one name under the earth. There's only one name by which men can be saved. Because there's only one name of God. Jesus Christ. Now you want to say Hebrew? Yahshua the Messiah. It's written there in Hebrew. It's written there in Greek above the cross and in Aramaic. Okay, choose one. It's the same guy. <laughs> Jesus? Aesis? Jesus, you know, or, and it's also written in Latin there. Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Right? Jesus, Jesus, Aesis, Yeshua. It's the name of, of Jesus Christ. I, he, I know him as Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, he has a second kid, right? And he names him Ephraim. Ephraim meaning God has made me fruitful. God has made me fruitful. Huh. In the land of my affliction. God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Jesus Christ comes and God has made the seed of word of Jesus Christ fruitful to a land of affliction. Affliction to him. On him all our sins are, are carried. Unto him all the sins of the world were manifested. That did, and, and prove it. We didn't believe in God because we destroyed God's one and only Son. Right? In, in the affliction. He was afflicted for our transgressions. He was pierced so we could be glorified to lift up the cup of salvation. Salvation. Ephraim meaning God has made me fruitful. God has made me forget what my family did to me. And God has made me fruitful in the land of the affliction of what my family did to me. Wow. Love thy enemy. The enemy turns us to God. And when we're with God, God now proves his word faithful, trustworthy, true. As he rose Jesus Christ from the dead to say, that's the word you believe in. That one. Christ crucified. And faith in it. Everybody who believes in Christ crucified and the faith in it, there's a reward. The living God himself, Jesus Christ, will come and live with you and be with you and restore you. That's what he says, you know, everybody wants eternal life, food, escape from the famine, right? Now they go and everything's prospering. 
All the Egyptians, now it's bad. Famine time starts. Getting towards the end of the famine. Well, it's real bad. At the end of the seven years, yeah, we made it through one year and uh, two years. Uh, four, uh, and then it's at the end. It's real bad. Now, it even says the whole world. Famine. No word. When, when does God open the gates? Like a dove. The heavens opened, and like a dove, the Spirit of God descended and landed on Jesus Christ. And it stayed there. Right? Jesus Christ, hey, guys, I gotta go. I gotta go to the Father. Because when I get to the Father, how much greater is it? Because I'm going to give you a gift. All the authority and everything to take back what he stole. Like the thief in the night. Nobody knows when we're going to believe. Only God knows. Your heart, might, and soul. And only God knows when you're ready to receive it. To, to receive it. Right? Everybody who believes in Jesus Christ, everybody who's been marked, everybody who has been sealed, hears the voice of the living God, and they shall have food. Joseph, the Pharaoh, the all Egyptians go to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, we're starving! Ask Joseph. Ask Joseph. Everybody went to Joseph. Jesus Christ, I'm the bread of life. God, open! Pray this prayer. Let thy kingdom come. Let your will be done. Here on earth. Pray this way, this. God will rip open the gates of heaven and rain and open the storerooms. When? In the famine? The end of the seven years of the famine? And I'll feed them all. Jesus says, my water is free and my food is free. Come, all who are hungry, come, who are tired, who need help. The story. Joseph opens the grain, opens the storerooms. And they fed everybody. All the world. All the world. He feeds all the people. Why do we go to Joseph? Because Joseph opened the grains. Opens the food. Opens the bread of life. Brings back revival. Brings back the word. Brings back restoration. To, to, to a land, to a people who, who didn't call on his name. Oh, isn't it us? Who didn't seek him out? Why? Because they were lost in the famine and God rips open the gates. And it's the only place you can find the food. Joseph. Jesus Christ. Remember that mark of the beast there in that? It doesn't, I don't know. Jesus died so he could be king and lord over the underworld. And then he rose so he could be king and lord over heaven and earth. Through their sins and disobedience, we, we, we come to a place where to, uh, when there's a famine of the word. And the life sucks. And the fire gets hot and begins to burn away our unfaithfulness. And we come to find out there's only one, only one, that's going to deliver us, help us, restore us, give us hope, take away the fear. Jesus Christ. And it all comes through the teachings and instructions of God's Word. Kingdom living. Understanding. Seeking out love. As being number one. Love is the greatest gift of all. From love comes the hope. From the hope comes the faith. From the hope and the faith and the love comes the celebration. The joy, the happiness, a banquet, a party, a wedding, a day to say, Lord, being a living God is alive. He keeps his promises, he answers prayers, and he gives poetic justice to a dark world that thought it couldn't be done. That's what God does. I just wanted you to know that. See you next time.